Good morning, everybody, man. Mondays, motivational Monday. By the way, Monday is my favorite day. It used to be the weekend, man. I remember them days, man. I used to hate weekdays. Oh my God, I'd either go to school, go to work, get a job, you know. Uh, uh, and 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 there's nothing worse than going to a place you don't want to be at. Oh my God, just thinking about it. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. This particular video, um, I did a, a mentorship session uh, with a young man, very interesting project also. I should have recorded it. My recording guy was not there. Great content and, and I apologize for all you guys, even though you haven't seen it, but but I wanted to talk about some of the, 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 the key point of that discussion because uh, what I see, um, where, where it's lacking the most when it comes to social ent enterprise or social entrepreneurship is actually um, not the actual innovation of solving a specific problem, but it's the business model. It's the business model, guys. A lot of um, young entrepreneur engineers, um, most of them are engineers that develop innovation or innovative ideas, but they, they, they're unable, or at least not their fault, but, but they, 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 they're trying to bring traditional business model into the space of um, impact uh, enterprise or social enterprise. And my key thing in, in all the businesses, especially when, when you focus on, on social enterprise uh, businesses, is you need to have a business model this, that, that is as innovative as the business itself. Number one, um, you, you're focusing on bringing solution to uh, uh, a population where income, they're limited by the income. So you have to have a very creative model. So briefly, his model, he developed a very creative uh, uh, structure that can um, that can dry, you know, uh, food much quicker than the traditional way. Great, great solution, really simple solution. And his initial idea was to uh, sell the solution to different farmers. And um, and my argument was why? Because there is a set, you know, uh, number of farmers in any country, especially Rwanda is a smaller market, so you have a, a, a much lesser bigger market and you're trying to sell an equipment that not necessarily uh, can be you know affordable uh, to the end user and uh, what I suggested was instead of selling why don't you create a, a centralized point for drying for, 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 for farmers around a, a specific community and um, you know from that point they pay for the service they need, you know? So you're becoming no longer a consumer-based product, but a, a service as a business model. And to me, sustainability and service as a business model is the way to go for the BOP, or the base of the pyramid. For those who don't know what the BOP is, it's the base of the pyramid. But, but anyone that's about to start a social enterprise. Listen to me. You need to focus on two things. Number one, have a very durable products. Number two, uh, find a way to create a hardware as a service business. Hardware as a service business. It's very important. Why? Because you're gonna have what we call recurring revenue. Instead of now depending on the sale, now you depend, you know, on the service you provide. So you can have day, I mean, monthly in, monthly out, you know, a recurring revenue. Now you don't focus on selling the product, you're selling a service. The great thing also is when you sell a service, you can upsell on the service. You can have additional service uh, that you can offer. In that particular case, I was telling him, 
Now, when you have this place where people can dry up, they pay a service, now you can pro provide additional services. You know, you can provide a, 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 a better connection or work with local partners or, or local other innovators that can, for example, connect their, their goods uh, that they harvest with the buyers, you know. It can improve the quality. Now, I'm not going to specifically speak on that business because I, I, I don't know that space too well. But the idea is people focus so much on the technology, you know, which is very important. But as important as the technology, and I said it before, your business model. I see too many companies failing because the technology is great. Their business model is not sustainable, you know. Consumer-based product is not sustainable for the BOP. It's just not. Sometimes it's pricing. Sometimes it's, you know, it will have a, uh, can you imagine 70% of the population is at the BOP in Africa? So, you know, if, if you're trying to bring a consumer-based product like we do with cell phones, laptop, every two years, it, it, it perish and they have to replace it. It, it, it wouldn't be sustainable. It wouldn't be sustainable. And I'm talking about all across the board, energy sector, agricultural sector, name it. We need to have a service-based system. And they understood that now. You know, I love the B-Box model. They finally got it, you know, uh, where now they're not selling the unit anymore. They're becoming a utility company. That's the way to go, you know. At the BOP, we're not gonna be on the selling point. Plus your margins are too small. For you to make a profit, you have to, to sell a huge amount of products, make a small profit, but you know for sure that customer will not be able to buy that product every two, three years. It's just not sustainable, you know? And we don't teach that. You know, we don't teach those things uh, to social uh, uh, entrepreneurs, unfortunately. You know, and, and, and those guys, come across but I hope you pick that and you understand hardware as a service you know and of course when it comes to pricing when it comes to uh, um, how, how do I package it and all you need to do testing on the field you know if you're not customer centric which is another challenge most companies have you know and I see a, 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 because a lot of innovation now are developed by um, uh, engineers and, and a lot of people, including myself, you know, a lot of people get, I'm not an engineer, I'm more into the business side, but still, a lot of people uh, stick to their comfort zone. You know, if you're an engineer, they want to focus more on the product development side, not necessarily on the business side. If you're a business guy, you want to focus more on the business side, not on the engineer and the product development side. But at the end of the day, and, and that's business one-on-one. Your customer build your business, not your product. Your customer build your business, not your product, okay? Your customer will tell you if there's a need for your product or not. Your customer will tell you what price point they're willing uh, uh, to pay for. Your customer will tell you if your product is better than your, 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 your competitor. Your customer will tell you everything. And how do you do that? You do a pilot. You go do survey. You go do market research. You talk to who you're targeting. You know, it only takes is a, is, is a book, a pen, and with your partners, two of you guys, select a region, and you do you do market research. You collect data. You you provide. And and if you're not customer centric, your company will die. It's that simple.